Hello everyone, this is the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host Travis Garrison, where we're talking sports and life. You know, I'm very grateful for this show because I get to meet interesting people from across the world that's doing very great things within our community. It's a blessing to get to know these individuals, um, to know what they're passionate about, to know what they love and care about. And, that, and that's the thing, that's the main thing for our show is to basically give people and individuals a platform that's doing something positive in the community and it's trying to make a difference. Today, I have a very special guest with me today, Mr. Douglas Ternica. He's a writer and founder of Peace is the Mission Productions. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm I good. I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time and, you know, taking the time to interview me and speak. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely appreciate you, you know, coming on, you know, just learning more about you and what you're doing and, and why you're doing these things. It's, it's, it's needed. Um, I'm grateful to have you on the show and to be able to share those messages and what you're doing uh, in the community and to help others uh, throughout their life uh, with our audience today. No, thank you. And thank you and welcome. Hello to the audience as well. It's a pleasure. I appreciate the guys taking the time and everybody at home listening. Thank you so much. Like you mentioned, my name is Takuzu Douglas Taranika. I'm an author and the founder of Peace is the Mission Productions. Yeah. So Peace is the Mission Productions. Peace is the Mission. That's, that, that name right there is very interesting to me and very unique. Why Peace is the Mission? What is, what, why did you come up with that name? Um, so that's, it's a big way, it's part of my journey in becoming an author and becoming a founder of the company. Um, the name first was actually the name of my first book, which is Peace is the Mission. I have a five book series. Um, it's an Afrocentric book series that covers three different tribes of people spread across you know, their land and their map. And there's a war that's brewing between these three tribes and just the different stories and journeys and what's going on between them. Um, and at the end of the day, the same thing that empowers these people is what kind of like separates them because they're fighting because one group has fire abilities, the other has ice, and then one group connects to nature and animals. But they're all fighting for more territory, more power, more land, right? But at the end of the day, what gives them power is called umoya. That's the energy within that world. So the same thing that powers and fuels them is what they're fighting about too. So peace is the mission is kind of the journey for these people in their world fighting towards more land, but there's the group of people in there that are fighting for peace. And that's kind of like the birth of the book series, and then that kind of went through with the name of the company. Because uh, as I started doing more projects, so different genres from action, horror, they all encompass the company values, which want to lead towards peace. Um, and that's the name of the company, Peace, because peace is the mission. Wow, that, that's, that's amazing. Um, I think that for a lot of things that I do in life, it's, it's, a, it's a purpose behind it. Mm. There's a reason behind it, whereas I'm trying to use these different, whether it's my books or, you know, message to get out to help other people, you know, to live better lives or to make smarter de decisions and choices. Is that something kind of what you're doing with, with your book series or is this a... Definitely, definitely. So with the different characters, like let's say with the book series, it's a five book series. Okay. And the first book is written in a dual point of view. So a dual point of view essentially have two of the main characters, each going through the story, what's happening, what's things through their perspectives as the story's progressing. The second book is continued by two other characters, and they're continuing the story through their perspective as things are going on. So the goal is to show how, in our world, this, like something can be happening, but you have these different perspectives of what's going on, right? So having these different voices share their lessons, their views, their characters, right. helps connect to different people as far as different audiences. And with Peace of the Mission, the core goal is to help people find peace within themselves. Because when you find that peace within yourself, then anything you're doing when you're interacting with other people is more peaceful. And that spreads out so much more than just a blanket statement of like peace all over. It's like right. no peace within yourself. So that's kind of like the journey of the characters as well. Right. And, and that's, that's awesome. Like you said, peace within yourself is very key. Right. You know, I think once you find, like you said, once you find peace within yourself, then the world looks different. You know, the world is, Definitely. You, know, you walk out your front door and... Like, things don't happen to you, they happen like for you. Right, kind exactly, because a lot of things in life you can't control. You know, you know, a, a while ago I had to learn that I only can control what I can. You know, if I go out here and I'm, I have a meeting or something and I get stuck in traffic, I can't, I can't control the traffic, control so I can't it, right. get upset because it's traffic. You know, that's gonna, like, you, like we talked about before in regards to letting that ruin my day or 
the plans that I had for my day or the plans that God had for my day that mm-hmm. day because of something I came to control. Exactly. So it's like exactly. controlling what you can and basically doing things like that where, like you said, before you leave the house, find peace within yourself. Mm-hmm. So when you go out here, you happy, jolly. <laughs> Definitely. I think a key thing, too, is like your mindset. So it's like if I'm stuck in traffic and I'm automatically thinking negative, my mindset might be just negative because of something earlier then it's all the things that traffic is keeping me from. Whereas what I tell myself is, well, you know what? God's probably protecting me from maybe if there wasn't traffic, I might have got into an accident if I got off that exit at the wrong time. Who knows what wrong things could have come about? So let me just sit here in traffic, take my sweet time. When it opens up, it opens up. Um, And I think also believing, like I were talking earlier, like believing that the universe is working in our favor, that the universe is not against us. You know, yes, bad things happen, but when you look at things as a whole, it's like, okay, the sun comes up no matter what, right? So that's something that you can no matter what. Like, I have, it's a blessing to wake up and see the sun, right? Because a lot of people don't get to see that. So now when you start realizing, like, okay, the world has been going on for hundreds if not thousands of years, so let me control what I can control. Let me not worry about these big things that are out of my way. Let me not worry about a future that my present can't impact. Instead, let me worry about the present self. You know, and thinking of that with that positive mindset helps in moving forward so much better. Absolutely, and I, you know, I love that, and I think more people need to do that. Definitely, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think the workplace would be a lot better and different if people, you know, before they leave their home, saying, "Look, I'm going to control what I can, and I'm going to go out here and find peace within myself." And I think days will be better for those individuals. And like I said, you can't control what you can't control. Definitely, you control what you can, and like that. So. Your company values. Tell us a little bit about that. Definitely. Um, so the first company value is Tino Saruza, which means we decide. So with we decide, the core thing is we always have a choice. Um, from the core of our thoughts. So if I'm thinking negative thoughts from the moment that I wake up, if it's like, ah, oh, let me an extra five minutes, right? So it's like I'm deciding to go into this mindset. Whereas if I'm taking on a project and let's say with me writing books, for example, that was something that was so new to me. My background was in retail management from like the ages of 19 or 20, I was in retail. I went into banking for a little bit. So writing was something that I would do for fun, um, just something I would do, just short stories here and there. And then when I started writing pieces, the mission, it was me questioning myself, like, okay, what happens if I continue on? What happens if I take this paragraph and now it becomes a chapter? Now it becomes two chapters, three. And then deciding that, okay, I'm I'm the only person really standing in my way. Because there's so many obstacles, I'm sure you know from your book writing journey, that like, you know, from finding the right um, editors is such a big journey, right? That's how I connected with CQ, who you're familiar with, right? Um, from finding the right illustrators to find the book covers, all these different obstacles that for me was like, okay, I'm going to stop here. Things are getting too hard. You decide like, okay, no, my goal was to publish this book and finish this book. So I'm going to make sure that I focus on whatever it needs to do and then get to that. So focusing on the power of your decisions for me has been a big thing um, that has helped me across my journey. So now when I'm trying to learn to do something new, like going from writing a book to writing scripts, it's like, okay, you, you're going you're gonna to suck at it first, right, right. you know, but you can practice, you can practice, you can practice. And if you decide to keep practicing, it's going to get better right. and you're going to get something good out of it. So keep right. doing it and then just follow in that formula. So that's like the first core value is Tino Sabu, so we decide. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you pronounce that for us? <laughs> sure. It's so, so the pronunciation, it's Tino Saruza. So it's from Zimbabwe. It's Shona from the language. Um, and it means, yeah, we decide. So we have a choice. And, mm-hmm. and, and like you said, that's very key. You know, we decide. <laughs> no, we decide to keep going forward. Mm-hmm. We get knocked down and get back up and keep moving forward. We decide if we get knocked down and stay down. It's that's all true. About, it's all about decisions. Like that's you very said, true. We decide. So we have a choice. We have decisions to make about going forward, whether we want to get stuck in this job that that's not making us happy or pursue something that we believe God put in our house to do, that's a decision. That's whether, very true. You know, so it's like that we decide that's very powerful, and I think that's powerful for any individual and especially for a company for sure. So what's your, what's your second? So the second value is umoya, which means energy. So with umoya, that's the energy that from the first book, that's where it really was born and brewed out. That's what gives a lot of the um, inhabitants their powers and their abilities, right? So with Umoya for myself and with my team, it's talking about the energy of what fuels you, what gives you that drive, what brings you joy, what brings you happiness, right? With Umoya, with joy and happiness, there's also a balance of truth, right? Because you have to be honest with yourself 
first and foremost before you're even honest with the outside world. So with that, it's what fuels that energy. So if love fuels that energy and positivity fuels that energy, when you look at our world, our world, our universe is run, I believe, off of love. When you think about how plants grow to then feed animals, those animals then take care of, like, everything is just connected to help things grow right, and live. Right, right. And that's love, right. you know? So for us as people, if we're moving in that same motion, right? If I'm coming here to speak with you and it's in a positive intent, if I, my goals of my company in a positive intent, then you are fueling that fire, right? right? Um, but I feel like when you go through tough times, if you're lying to yourself, deceiving yourself, doing negative things, then that kind of covers your light, it covers your energy. And so you find yourself kind of going down the wrong road kind of a thing. So with Umoya, it's that energy of what fuels you. So being honest with yourself, am I doing what I believe is right? Am I following my right path? Um, I know you were mentioning before how you know, sometimes when God put things, something in front of you, it may not make sense to other people, right. but you have to have that faith that, okay, this is what I was called to do. This right. is where my path is going. Right. Um, I have an animation called Princess Tatenda and the Forest of Treasures. One of the analogies that the animals teach her about people is, and th that I like to teach the audience, right, is with herds. Like when you think about a herd of animals, like a herd of antelope or a herd of buffalo. Right. You might have hundreds or thousands running, stampeding, right, because they see six or seven lions. Right. When in reality, if those buffalo just stopped, turned around and ran in the direction of the lions, all of them could stampede and kill those lions, right? Absolutely. But those buffalo do what they were raised and taught to do, what they were evolved to do, is you see a lion, it's danger, so you run. You run, you focus on what's in front of you, you follow that person. In a herd, who gets, in, who gets killed? Those sick, the weary, the ones off the end, right? The ones that are falling off. So your goal is to stay in the center and keep moving. So as people, we do have that lizard brain, that animal side of us, right? And when you think about us as a society, we do move in herds. Right, What's, what does everybody feel about this? What's the thought about this? How do they feel about that? How do they, and then when you go against that, that thought process, you end up being an outcast, being on the sides. And our family, our loved ones, our friends, they care for us. So when they see you being on that sides, to them that's what happens, what happens when you're on those sides. That's when the prey gets you, the lions, yeah, right? But in reality, I think for us, for people in those positions, that's where it's a test of your true faith. That's the test of your light. Like, okay, can my light guide me as I get off this path to find my own path? And as you do that, you find, you know, your own herd or you build that in there. But that's the sense of your energy, your light. You know, your energy can help fuel you in a group of people. It can help push you out. But getting really to know yourself and what fuels you, I feel like it's a key thing for individuals. Right, and, and that's key in, in regards to energy. I think energy is, is major, it's mm -hmm. big. I've learned through of my life and my experiences that, you know, energy is a powerful thing. And I had to learn, you know, I had to really like, because I think a lot of individuals, like you said, get caught up in situations. I was an athlete for most of my life. So my mindset was as an athlete, I mean, we grew by I hang out with athletes, I, you know, do things with athletes, I just had that mindset. But it wasn't until I stopped playing basketball when I had to find myself. Mm. What do I truly love? What do I really care about? How did I feel when I was seven years old before I started playing basketball? Right. What made me happy? What brings you joy? What brings you joy? Right. So I had to find that all over again. Because there'd be times I'll do things when I was being an athlete, you know, hang out, do certain things that the next day I'll feel drained. And I'm like, why am I feeling like why? Mm -hmm. Like why mm -hmm. is that? Well, well exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. why, like why? Like why am I? Feeling and you're getting to like re know yourself and going back and learning from that past. Absolutely. Definitely. Because yeah. because it's like I was doing things that didn't really make me happy. I was doing things because I think this is what being a basketball player was supposed to be doing. Right. So, you, like you said, you was sticking to that that that, that hurt, path. That, that path. Mm -hmm. So, being safe, being safe in a sense. And like you said, I was thinking about it actually. I think yesterday or today, in regards to like social media. A lot of times, people post and do things because they need that validation. Right. They need people to say good job. Well, that's awesome. awesome. Well, that's great. Well, you look pretty. Or things like that. that. Like you said, that energy. They, 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 they feel off of that mm -hmm. when that's not really true good energy in a sense. You know, exactly, because, no, definitely. Because if that goes away, then what? How do then you what feel? Happened? Exactly. How do exactly. you feel? So like you said, for me, nowadays, how I try to maneuver and who I hang out with, the energy has to be good. If it don't feel good, I can't do it. Not mean That doesn't mean I don't love you or care about you. It's just because this don't make me happy. This is... I don't feel good. I don't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Exactly. Nobody knows. Like it's, and it's, it's that honesty part. 
Right. Yeah. So your body would know. Your body would tell you because <laughs> you would feel it. It's, it's a. It's a. For me, I go off for of vibes and energy. Mm -hmm. That's how. You know. That's how I connect with people. I can feel a certain way about somebody. I can feel the energy in the room. If it's not right, I feel uncomfortable. So it's you. You get those signs and things. So I think energy is key. I think people need to know that about themselves and learn that and understand it because that can mess with your mental as well. You know, bad energy and can mess with your emotions and things like that. So I think that's a, a great, another great uh, company value as well. Thank you. And with those, they also kind of connect with each other. So I. When, when you think about the first value of Tino Saurudza, we decide, then you think about your energy. Then there's also accountability that you also have to have in that honesty, right? Because now it's when I'm doing something in the present, when you start getting that feeling of like, oh, I, sh I don't want to do this, or I shouldn't be doing this, or this. And then when you choose not to do it, and then you feel good later on, that's great accountability. But let's say if you choose to do it, and you go against that feeling, and then later on you feel bad, or you feel negative, or you feel that, then you have to be honest with yourself, like, oh, my decision made me do that, right? Absolutely. You have to remove the other things that might have happened. Somebody else might have said something, but that wasn't the real reason you were right, upset, right, you know? Right. So I feel like it's also that honesty thing and the power of your decisions and respecting your energy and holding yourself accountable, right. and, you know? That's definitely a big one. Now, and another thing you said that was key in how I maneuver nowadays in the sense of not staying with the grain, like not doing something because my family think this is the right thing to do or people say this is this is this is just normal you have to do this you right. have to get a nine to five you have to get a real job when god puts something in your heart to pursue something else like and and you would know that feeling if it's you know from god and since he put it in your heart to pursue it and it's not easy mm -hmm. and it's gonna make you sometimes look crazy or seem like you're like what are you doing definitely but you have to see it through because it's, it's bigger than them this is bigger than you it's it's, it's like i believe you know we all here for a purpose god put us here for a purpose um and it's about finding that purpose and that gift and using that gift to basically use whatever God wants you to use it for. And a lot of times people are scared because of failure, mm -hmm. scared of what people might think, so they don't pursue that thing. So they stay stuck, they stay within that herd because they, this is the safe place. It's what they know, it's what they can expect and what you can go with. A absolutely, so I, I, that's a great thing to do and a great thing to have. And like I said, for me, I think that's, what you're doing is, is a plus and you know, I appreciate it. We need more people be thinking like that, you know, but it takes for us to go through that and say, look, I did it, so it's possible. So it gives people hope and encouragement to basically go through it themselves. And then do it themselves, exactly, Absolutely. like we learn from each other. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. No, definitely. Absolutely. So, I mean, like I said, your, your company values so far, they, they are great and it's a necessity for sure. And I, I definitely think more people need to know more about them. And we're definitely going to talk more about that after these commercial breaks. So stay tuned with us. The Crossover Talk Show. We're talking sports and life. Mr. Douglas, Ternika, stay tuned. We've got more to come. Thank you.